Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here with you. I'm really excited to talk about a brand new study on a compound called Nigella sativa. So this is a double blind study and they showed that a historic herb had dramatic effect upon improving thyroid function, helping weight loss, and lowering inflammation in people that have Hashimoto's. So I, the name is Nigella sativa. This has also been called Nigella, black cumin, black caraway, onion seed, fennel flower, kalanji. I like the kalanji, it's a cool sound to that. I'll talk about this as Nigella for the rest of this and moving forward. So really, really awesome thing because a couple of reasons, one of which is that it was really a well done, double blind, placebo controlled study. What that means is that there was a group of people, half of which were taking Nigella, the other half took a, a pill that looked the same, and none of the participants nor the researchers knew which was which till it was all said and done. And that's powerful because placebic effects, biases, expectations on both sides, the participants and the researchers, are huge. They're big factors, so it's awesome to rule that out. Now it's also exciting because this is a plant that's been around for a long time, and we've got lots of data about it. It's been used as a food-like substance for millennia. There's been a lot of research saying that it can benefit autoimmune conditions and generalized inflammation. We know it's safe. We have a lot of good background data behind it. Sometimes you'll see studies on a good herb and it looks encouraging, but there's just no major history of humans using this for long periods of time. We don't know for sure how it plays out. In, in our practice, Dr. Kashaba has been raving about this for a long time as being uh, like a, almost like a magic tonic in Middle Eastern cultures. There was one source she pointed me to to where that black, black seed nigella could cure anything besides death. <laughs> and not that powerful, of course, but uh, inflammation is the core part of so much of the disease process, inflammation and free radical damage. And this seems to stop both those problems. Because this was a well done study on Hashimoto's really got my attention. So other studies with Nigella, Nigella have shown that it's great with allergies, arthritis, asthma, autoimmune disease, cancer, hair loss, blood cholesterol, blood pressure. And those were there, but the thyroid study again is one that really got my attention. So they had about 100 people that could have been participants, but they weaned that down to 40. They were from age 22 to 50, and they all had Hashimoto's. They were mostly women. They were on thyroid treatment, but it had not changed for six weeks before the study started. And during the study, none were doing any supplements, nor did they change their diet in any particular way. So the main things that they tracked were some thyroid blood levels, some measurements of body size, and some measurements of thyroid inflammation. So over the course of eight weeks, they looked at all these various things. And pretty dramatic. One thing that you may not really hear about otherwise is a compound called vasoendothelial growth factor, or VGF. Now, this is associated with the growth of new blood vessels. And past a certain point, that's bad. Hashimoto's is characterized by a lot of extra blood vessels growing within the thyroid. We can see those on ultrasound. And higher VGF levels are also associated with higher risk of cancer amongst those with Hashimoto's. So again, placebo study, awesome thing. They do a really good job making sure that the placebo pill looks the same and has no real active ingredients. Uh, there were some people that did drop out of the Nigella group because of side effects. Specifically, it was itching and nausea, and that was three people in that group. Now, the interesting thing was that four people dropped out of the placebo group <laughs> for similar symptoms, similar side effects. And there's a thing called nocebo. You know, placebo, you take a pill that does nothing and you feel better in your head. A nocebo is the opposite. You take a pill that does nothing and you feel sick from that, not because of the pill, but from expectation. So whenever we see side effects that are the same in the active medicine as in the placebo, we don't think they were as much attributed to the active substance. We think it was more so just expectation. And that almost always happens. So they track the dietary intake as well. And in terms of weight, it's pretty awesome. So no change in calories, no change in diet. Those on the Nigella group lost an average of about two and a half pounds over the course of those eight weeks. They also lost a nice half inch around their waist. And neither of those things occurred in the control group. So to see that kind of a change with, with no dietary shift, it actually fits how much of a change we saw in the thyroid blood levels. 
So those in the placebo pills, their thyroid blood levels did not change. They were not different before or afterwards. But those on the nigella group, every measured marker of thyroid function improved. The TSH dropped by over two points. And now TSH, remember, it's backwards. So a low TSH means your thyroid is making more hormone and or your body's responding to that hormone more effectively. But in any case, you're at better thyroid status. When, that, when someone's hypothyroid and the TSH goes lower, that's a good thing. That means your body has more thyroid function. And that commonly correlates with better weight loss. Now, it doesn't go on forever. I've talked elsewhere about how TSH too low is bad. So no one's got too low. They were rather high going into it, but they improved. T3, T4 levels, they also both improved. And those are direct measurements of thyroid hormone output. You know, the TSH is more backward, where the T3 and T4 are more direct. The other improvement we saw was an antithyroid peroxidase. That's the main antibody present in more than half of those with Hashimoto's, and it went down by 140 points or more on average. And then also the VGF, that marker of inflammation and vascular activity, thyroid cancer risk, that dropped by 1,400 points in the Nigella group, and no change in the, the group taking the placebo. So how could this happen? Well, nigella has a compound called thymoquinone. And thymoquinone has been known to protect cells against autoimmunity. So it can help them not be damaged, but it also speeds the repair. Prior studies from animals have shown that nigella can help shrink the thyroid when it's swollen, help the body respond better to D3 hormone, and be more effective at weight loss. Now, nigella oil is not commonly available, available as a food, and the drawback is that many versions of it have been adulterated with cheaper, similar things like black caraway. And of course, the drawback about adulterated nigella is that it probably wouldn't work as effectively. <laughs> For better thyroid health, weight loss, improved thyroid function, two of the gel caps of nigella once daily is, is the preferred way to do that. Take that with a meal. And like any other supplement, any other pill, don't take it with your thyroid meds if you're on thyroid medication. If you're not on thyroid medication, but your thyroid is still sluggish, also safe to use. You can still likely improve those scores. Now, a very important point I want you to, to bear in mind is that you really want to get retested after eight weeks because you may need a different amount of thyroid medication. If your scores improve, the same dose that's good for you may be too much for you. And I don't want you hyperthyroid because that's dangerous. So this is, again, something that's safe for longer term use. You can use this now. It's very food-like. You can use this now long term to help minimize the damage to your thyroid and maximize the repair to your thyroid. So honestly, I've wanted something like this just, just forever. There have been so many thyroid support products, and they've used ingredients that don't really have very significant science behind them, or they're even just a bad idea. But I wish there was something like this that could just help your thyroid work better. And now there is, and we've got good science to support it, and it's totally safe. So, Yahtzee. <laughs> Dr. Christensen here with you. Take great care. We'll talk in really soon. Bye-bye.